Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, everything really depending on the guests we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Miotis. All social media know me as PBs. You will recently recognize my guest from a show that just dropped on Netflix called Dad Stop Embarrassing Me with Jamie Foxx. Portia Coleman is with us. Portia, welcome to Pop Turnative. I'm giving my own theme music. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited. That you, I'm, I'm really excited that you're able to join me on uh, on my show. It's one of those things yes. where your show just dropped. I mean, what was that kind of like for you and the cast, like the week before it dropped? I'm sure there was a lot of nerves. Ah, uh, yeah, it was surreal. It's like we started this process all the way in March of last year. We did one episode and then got shut down because of the pandemic, and then we had a chance to come back in the summertime and work for three months. So for us, this project is like. It's a long time coming. So I think a week before it was just like, it's about to happen. Oh my God. They start sending us the promos and all the assets from Netflix. And then it was like, all right, guys, it's coming out. Come on Wednesday. Come on Wednesday. So it's actually exciting that it's been a little over a week and people have just loved the show. It was number one out the gate. I mean, it's been incredible and we're still in the top 10 now. So I'm excited. So I'm curious to know. So basically because, you know, when the, the, like the press release came out about this show, right? It's like Jimmy mm-hmm. Foss getting back to his sitcom roots and everything. Yes. And we all know, you know, people audition and everything. What was what was it like when you heard about this project and then when you finally booked it, Portia? Oh, man. I think um, I... So some people may or may not know. I worked with Jamie several years ago on a movie. And he was director, executive producer. And I went in the room, blew him away. And, you know, he always said, you know, if I get another project, I'd love to work with you again. And that's even after I'd already worked on a radio show that he had. He had Foxhole Radio. I was on radio. So I've known Jamie for many, many years, just in passing. But that time, he had a chance to see me in the audition room and just loved my performance. So, you know, a lot of people say, I'll come back and we'll work on stuff together again. But you're like, okay, you don't hold your breath for that. But it happened here. (laughs) But it happened. And all of a sudden, (laughs) Dad's Top Embarrass Me came around. I heard, you know, he has a, you know, a sister and a father on the show and a love interest. So I'm thinking like, oh man, that'd be awesome if I can go in for it. And sure enough, we got a call and it was for his sister. And I went out for one audition. They put me on tape. And I think a week later, I got the contracts from Netflix to, to be a part of the show. So it was a blessing and a an amazing experience to have it be such an easy process, but also knowing that I was pretty much hand selected by Jamie for the for the role. Absolutely, because you it, it's because the reason I want to ask ask you this question now is because you mentioned the radio. I mean, for people that have yeah. co- followed your career, you Portia Coleman wears many hats. You do a lot of different things. How important is it for you? And when did you realize the importance of wearing many hats in the entertainment industry? I think I realized the importance when I was discovering my own talents. I mean, when I was growing up. I I was always singing. Music was my first love. My family came from musical background. And then I was like, I'm a ham. I'm good in front of the camera. And my mom took me to one acting class and I got an agent right after it ended. And I was doing background work for about six months. I was on the Ellen show and I did Drew Carey, Wayans Brothers, all these shows as a background actress. And then I booked three commercials back to back, had to join SAG, the Screen Actors Guild. And I was rocking and rolling ever since. I did Seventh Heaven. I did Bones, Boston Public. Silicon I did Disney Valley. Movies, Silicon Valley. It's One like, of my favorite shows of all time, by the way. Just people love that, <laughs> that show. Every time I'm somewhere, I'm like, let me see what their tip. I can see this person likes the Silicon Valley. I can see this person likes the Parkers. I can see this person likes Wild It Out. So I think for me, knowing that I could sing, I can act. And then in junior high school, I was a dancer and I was like, I can dance. I love this. But I was training. I was doing ballet and jazz and hip hop and tap and all these different dance forms. And then next thing you know, I was like, I can host. I'm really good at hosting and talking to people. Next thing you know, I was on Maury's show hosting. I was hosting BET projects. And then I landed a show on Fox as a daily entertainment host. So I think I discovered the many hats just by by realizing I had the talent and then cultivating the actual you know, the, the the necessary assets. I've got the agents and then I had the training. To me, training is so important. Absolutely. And I did that. And now fast forward, I, I'm like quadruple threat because I do voiceovers. If you listen to video games and pop them in, I might be the girl that's doing the voiceover. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It's true. Anthem is a big video game that came out like last year. And next thing you know, I was the girl that was the voiceover in Anthem as well as one of the characters in it. 
that I was with motion capture for. I never thought I'd be doing. But it keeps motion you. It keeps. It keeps. It keeps you busy to to oh. be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. But I love it. It's like when I'm sitting down and just like when the whole pandemic happened, it's like I'd never had that much time off in my life. Yeah. I was like, what do I do? I just hang out and OK, I can't do anything. So I started building a studio in my house. I built everything. <laughs> I, I just get antsy. So I have to be doing something. So to me, it's just I love discovering those many hats by just taking a risk and going for it. Absolutely. I love the show so much. It's such a fun family sitcom. I mean, there's not much more to mm. say about it, right? It's just, it's a fun family right? sitcom, right? It's a fun family sitcom. So many issues that we're tackling, so many emotions that you'll feel during the show. You're happy, you're sad, you're, you're, you're thinking. It makes you think of your own family, whether it's your mother, your father, your nieces, your nephews. There's always a character, I think, in shows that you can relate to. And luckily for ours, I think, you know, I've gotten messages from people overseas saying, my 86-year-old grandmother loves your show. And then we have people that are 12 years old watching, you know, our show. So yeah. it just shows that we we touched a lot of different hearts and markets by being able to have a whole family sit down and watch our show together. I feel like it's that's very difficult to do. I feel like it's not kind of an easier said than done thing. I feel like it's very yes. difficult. Not all shows mm -hmm. are for the young audience and the older audience. No, not at all. I mean, to me, when you watch Silicon Valley, it's like, to me, Silicon Valley <laughs> skews towards a specific audience. That's a specific audience. You know what I'm saying? So like, good. I love tech. I, I, I'm i very computer savvy <laughs> myself. So when I got that, I was like, oh my God, Silicon Valley, this is so awesome. But certain <laughs> shows skew to different audiences. You know, that's like... You know, I mean, different shows on Netflix, which I love, they have such a vast array of, of programming on their on their network that it's beautiful. You can stream whatever you want to, whenever you want to. Yeah. For this show, I feel like, again, you have a dad, you have a grandpa, you have a sister, you have the crazy best friend next door, you have the love interest. You can look at it and say, I can relate to somebody on this show and somebody in my life, you know, and that's the blessing. And you are part also, it's a family show, but you are also yeah. part of the Netflix family. Yes. How does it I'm feel so to be excited. part of the Netflix family, Portia? So amazing. I mean, the Netflix family has been amazing. I mean, shout out to, to Netflix on Instagram and Twitter. Shout out to Strongback Lead mm -hmm. on Instagram and Twitter. They have done such a great job at promoting our show and talking about our show, reposting our messages and our posts and our retweets and everything. And um, I love the fact that even if you go right now to look at the Parkers that they just added over the summertime on Netflix, you can catch me in several episodes on that show. I know. Um, I had a Christmas film that was on Netflix. So to me, I've always been around, around and on Netflix at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is truly Netflix and Jamie Foxx and Corinne Foxx's brainchild that came to the network. So now it's really like, it's like home. So I love it. It's interesting because, you know, they said it was like back to his roots, the sitcom and everything. For you yes. specifically, it started with you with like music, like you said, was one of your first mm -hmm. loves, right? Yeah. Um, do you always sometimes go back to your roots a little bit? Like, is it always there where it's like, yeah, I love acting. I like doing the voiceovers, yeah. but I love singing. Like, is it always there for you? It's, it's, I think it's always there because I don't think it would have happened if Netflix wouldn't have saw and yeah. understood, much less Jamie Foxx. This girl's got an amazing voice. Let's have her sing on the show. Yeah. And if you, I'm telling you, if you were a fly on the wall during the whole time we were there filming, you would hear me and Jamie singing and harmonizing and then Jonathan kicking in with his vocals, me and Kyla Drew dancing. It's just, there's so many talents that we all have on this cast. It's amazing just to watch it all come to life in this show that you guys see. But just to know that if we're blessed with a season two, just how much more we will be doing. Because at that point, people know the family, they see who we are and we can just fly and do all these things that we have in mind. You and know? David, I have to say, David Allen Greer, like, come on. Oh my God. Like, David <laughs> Allen Greer, like, we, we, we all joke about David Allen Greer from, from the, the, the funny and best dressed to the onset prankster. Seriously, if you guys go right now, go on YouTube and just type in Dad Stop Embarrassing Me and David Allen Greer, and you'll see like a five minute piece they put together when they were asking us questions and everybody answered to damn near every question. David well, it's funny because David every Ellinger. episode, every episode, there's like that I've watched. Yeah. There's like three or uh -huh. four moments where you're laughing, like of specifically. Course. But like, mm -hmm. there's always at least one David Allen Greer in every episode. Like every <laughs> single episode, where you're like, really, like to me, the funniest moments are when you know, e even like in episode two, when we're sitting there trying to plead with. Sasha about why you need to go to church. And, yes. You know, you know, Brian's like, it's intimate. And I'm like, hallelujah. And Jonathan is like, it's, it's family. And all of a sudden Jamie's like, it's, it's, and David Allen Greer said, it's church. God damn it. Like he has so many one liners where you're like, the holy oh water, God. the holy the water. Holy water. Ooh, I didn't throw this holy water on. I think I got some of the devil on me. <laughs> like so many 
one-liners that are now becoming memes and gifs and it's just it's just amazing just to, to see the process of, of how people have gravitated to this show and loved it in so many I, ways. I need to know because you got like when you were filming this show you obviously have some opportunities mm. to kind of talk was yes. jumanji brought up at least one time was Jumanji brought up at least because one time? Because David Alan Greer no. has one of my favorite, like he has such oh. a good role in Jumanji, oh, and like he is he's hysterical. done so many amazing things. But that one always stands out for some reason. That was one of my favorite movies growing up. I mean, Robin Williams and and him playing the I'm not gonna say a cowardly <laughs> cop. He was a cop that was keeping it real. He's like, hold up, I don't know what's going on. This ain't in my job title, <laughs> yeah. but I don't want no parts of it. I think everybody can relate and be like, mm -hmm, that's exactly what I would do if that was me. So David has so many movies that he's so been many, in, but that one always like, stands out for some reason. That's the always so incredible. <laughs> His comedy is next level. Like if you even ask Jamie, he always would say that David Allen Greer was the funniest person on the set of In Living Color. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of all the people you had there. You know, Tommy Davidson, Jamie Foxx, you had Jim Carrey. But Jamie unequivocally will tell you that he thought David Allen Greer was the funniest person on set just because he's so quick on his toes. He's he's brilliant when it comes to just improv and I think we were all so good at that that so many moments that you actually see on the show were not planned. It was just, he did something and then Jamie did something then I would do something and we'd all fall in line. And next thing you know, boom, there's the scene. Like even when you're watching beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, we knew we were gonna say that, <laughs> but all the dance moves from what I was doing to what Jamie was doing to David Allen Greer, all of that was like, <laughs> what is going on? It wasn't planned, but those moments are some of the best moments in the show that they kept. And I'm grateful for that because you guys have no idea just the camaraderie that we have off camera and it just translates on camera so well. Can you dive into it a little bit more about working with Jamie specifically on this project? What was yes. it like working on this project with him? Oh man, this project I think was so special because he has not been on a sitcom in about 20 something years. Of yeah. course he came from In Living Color, but then he had the Jamie Foxx show and Jamie ever since has won Oscars, he's won Grammys, he's done everything you could imagine. He's yeah. right now, you know, at the only black actor to lead it as, a, as a voiceover in a film for Soul that he just won for. Like, he's done everything. And to come back and say, listen, I wanna do this show with my daughter about our life story growing up, it was just a blessing to watch his process and to watch Corinne be around as well, bringing these stories to life that really did happen. Of course, it's loosely based on, on their dynamic, but, so many moments from the scene where he's getting bullied. Jamie told us the whole story about how he would get bullied in school by this one person. He snatched the chain and how he did all this stuff to him that we're sitting there listening to like, wow, what we're doing right now is really true to life. And that's such an amazing feeling to know that you're working with somebody who lived through this and who's telling you what happened. And now you can just bring your own um, embodiment to a character that, that he's putting on television. So it was a dream come true working with him. No, I, absolutely. It's just, and he, it's 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 funny because you know he. For people that watch it, you know you'll uh -huh. see him like, especially in episode two, like he plays multiple characters on the yes, show. Yes, so many characters. <laughs> that, Cadillac <laughs> Calvin. He plays Rusty the bartender. Then he plays, of course, Reverend Sweet Tea, which you just can't get enough of. Like he was in rare form, and Jamie's a method actor. All day long, he was Reverend Sweet Tea until he came out of that costume and had to go back to being Brian. Like. He is so brilliant, and, and his uh, off-the-cuff humor is amazing, and his improv is even better. So, yeah. It was what, what was it like working with, we talked about David Al Greer, you know what I mean? But we yeah. talked about Jamie, the ever cast and crew, like Valente yes. and Jonathan. What was it like working with all oh, them? So Jonathan and I met years ago because I interviewed him on the Fox show that I had. And we took a picture together, and it's the funniest, funniest thing, where he's sitting on this kind of like um, this stool, and I'm like literally in between his legs doing this really sexy pose, and he's doing this whole funny moment of a picture and you would never swear we had just met but we hit it off just like that we were friends on instagram we were friends on twitter and we hadn't seen each other since but to know that all of a sudden we heard that we, each other was on this show and we were gonna have like a possible romance it was hilarious so we play so well <laughs> off of each other i loved him on two broke girls he was the funniest guy on, as oleg on the show and i was a fan of heather i had all i watched her on a big dance show that she was on before Yep. And Kyla Drew, I was unfamiliar with. My nieces knew who she was from a lot of the programs she did. Valente, I loved watching on the George Lopez show. So it's like literally it's everyone. Powerhouse cast. It's a stacked cast if you think about it. a big cast of people <laughs> that you can all point out a finger and be like, oh my God, I love them from this show. And now when you watch us together, it's just like 
we we mesh so well. And I think Jamie and Corinne and, and the Netflix team was so brilliant in putting us together the way they did. Because I it's think it's true. Like, oh, drop it, two broke girls. Oh, uh, um, Jamie Foster, like, the color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it's Dave like, Dollar oh, Greer, Portia like, Coleman, like, Silicon Valley. Of course. You're like, what? And everybody, <laughs> they're, they're, they're pointing at and saying, like, we've seen these people on so many different shows throughout our, our life growing up on television from 30 years ago till so a couple years ago, like people have seen me on Good Girls recently, and they're like, yeah. oh, I'm a fan of yours. I just didn't yes. know about all the my, stuff that you've my, done. It's funny because I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my sister's watching Good Girls. No way. And I was watching this show, uh -huh. and she was like, you're just a Good Girls. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like I was literally doing two shows at one That's time. That's also I a show even... that in some countries is on Netflix. Netflix it's, family, it's, I'm it's just saying. It's on Netflix. <laughs> it, was, it was like streaming. It was in the top 10 on Netflix as well. Yeah. And it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because I was doing that at the same time I was doing our show, but I, I couldn't go back because it was crossing the lines now because, you know, I have a, a series regular contract with Netflix and I did a several episodes of Good Girls. The pandemic happened when they wanted to come back. I was already booked. So hopefully in the time off that I'm, I'm not doing that, stop embarrassing me, you know, I can come back to Good Girls in, in, in a way if they keep that storyline going. But yeah. I've done so much and people just don't realize it until they literally look at my resume and they're like, Good God, this girl's been busy. <laughs> That's awesome, though. So, yeah, I'm that girl that, you've seen in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Portia, yeah. thank you so much for coming on Poptternatives. You're awesome. I had such a great time. Thank you to you guys who have been streaming the show and watching it and for wanting to interview me to let people get a better idea of who I am, you know, off, off camera. So this has been a blessing. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So sure. they can watch season. Yeah. Season one is now available on, yes, Netflix, on Netflix. So Netflix. they can watch and hopefully that. we'll do another interview if they green light us. Fingers crossed. And where can yeah. people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Yes, at Portia Coleman on everything, at P-O-R-S-C-H-A-C-O-L-E-M-A-N on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Clubhouse. And I always say MySpace too, but I mean, I don't even know how to log in anymore. So <laughs> if you send me a message there, I might not get back to you for a couple of years, but you could try it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, this has yes. been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative. For previous episodes, you can catch Portia right now at Dad's Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me on Netflix. Until next time, this is Portia Coleman yeah. and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.